Hi students, today I am starting lecture 31 on our aerospace engineering course and this lecture is going to be about trust required and available trust. So these are some things which are very important if you are going to fly the aircraft and it also helps us determine the maximum velocity at which the aircraft can fly. I am Dr. Ranjan Ganguly. Now let us go back to our aircraft figure and look at the final equations we had derived previously. So at the end of the previous lecture, I essentially had the aircraft. It was going through certain amount of lift and drag and essentially there was thrust and weight. So the equations we obtained were that lift is balanced by W or L is equal to W and on this side it was that thrust is equal to drag. Now, if we consider that the aircraft is flying with a given velocity and also it is at a given altitude, let us say this altitude is h, then I can write thrust equal drag equals q infinity s c d. Now, this of course is nothing but the expansion of the drag. So, do remember that q infinity here is half rho infinity v infinity square which is the dynamic pressure, S is the area of the wing and CD is the drag coefficient of the airplane. Similarly, I can write the second equation L equals W that is Q infinity S C L and here C L is the lift coefficient of the airplane. Then I divide these two equations so I get T by W equals C D by C L. And so using this equation, I can write the trust required as W by CLCD or also W by L by D. So essentially CL by CD and L by D are exactly same because to remember that they are essentially Q infinity S into CL or Q infinity S into CD. That's the lift and drag. Now, why we like to put everything in terms of weight is because weight is something which we know, whereas lift is something which has to be calculated using various aerodynamic methods and so on. Similarly, trust is something which we know, but drag has to be calculated using the aerodynamics of the aircraft, the drag polar and all these things. So now let's start looking at the trust required curve. This is trust required versus velocity. So to do that, what we would have to do is that consider that you are at a given height and velocity and at that height and velocity, you can easily calculate CL because CL would be W by half rho infinity V infinity square into S. So at this point, you know the weight of the aircraft, you know the density of the aircraft if you are at a given height, recall the standard atmosphere and you can also easily find out S which is the area of the wing. We also know V infinity because it's specified here. So if I can calculate CL then I can put it in the drag polar and I can calculate CD because CD is CD0 plus CL square by pi E A R. Again recall E is the Oswald span efficiency factor and A R is the aspect ratio of the particular aircraft we are dealing with. So now if we have to find TR is W by CL by CD, I can get CL, CD, I can calculate TR and this would give me TR as a function of V infinity. So I can do this for various V infinity values if I fix a H value. So for example, I could consider standard C level and I could obtain the trust required in Newton versus V infinity in meter per second and I would get a plot like this. Now why this plot has this particular shape I'm going to discuss later in a more quantitative manner through the equations but right now let us just take that this is the curve and of course there is a minimum point of this curve and this corresponds to the point where CL by CD is a maximum which you can see from this equation here for trust required that is TR is W by CL by CD. CL by CD is in the denominator. So if that goes up, TR goes down. Now, TR is a minimum when CL by CD is a maximum. That's the way mathematicians would put it. So TR is a function of V infinity. And so this function has a minimum point 
and this minimum point corresponds to CL by CD being a maximum. So what this tells us is that we want to always fly the aircraft at a situation where we want maximum lift by drag as an objective function. So in many situations, if you are doing aircraft design, you can actually have an objective like maximize the lift by drag and you can use optimization methods also to achieve these objectives. If you are unfamiliar with optimization methods, I have a set of videos on my channel which you can look at. That's the optimization playlist. I will put a link in the end screen. So essentially what you do here is you maximize L by D to reduce thrust. And why reducing thrust is important because in a typical jet engine, the thrust is directly proportional to the fuel used. So if you reduce thrust, you reduce the fuel used, you reduce the cost of flying. And also if you are an airline, you would increase your profit or as it happens in some cases, you may reduce your loss. Now, what you need to do here is that you need to keep the angle of attack at a value which gives you this maximum L by D. And do remember this angle is typically very small when an aircraft is flying because cruise velocity is very high for a typical aircraft like I've shown here, a typical transport or a passenger aircraft. So what will happen is that in the lift equation the and the drag equation, the half rho v square will be pretty large. So essentially the dynamic pressure being very large, the CL and CD can be quite small and so therefore alpha needs to be pretty small to just balance the weight of the aircraft. So typically if we plot the curve for CL by CD with respect to alpha, we get something like this which I have shown here with the red line and you can see that CL by CD reaches a maximum at a certain angle and this angle we will call as alpha L by D max. So this alpha value is typically something like two to five degree for most aircraft. So conventional aircraft have values of alpha L by D max like this. So essentially what this tells you is that they fly at a relatively low angle with respect to the wind coming in. So all this was very qualitative. So now I'm going to look at all this quantitatively and we are going to actually mathematically show the minimum point of this thrust required equation. So to start with, we again go back to our drag polar. So do recall the drag polar is CD is CD zero plus CL squared by pi EAR. And then we take the equation for thrust required. So thrust required is equal to drag because the thrust has to compensate for the drag. And this is Q infinity SCD. And therefore I take the drag polar term CD. I put it here, I get this equation. And now I expand this TR out. So the first term becomes Q infinity SCD zero. The second term becomes Q infinity S CL square by pi E A R. So now you can clearly see that the first term here is like a parasite drag type of term. And the second term here is an induced drag type of term because essentially CL is directly related to lift and so this is the drag you get because you are trying to generate lift and this is the drag you get from other situations which are not functions of lift. So we again just wrote this equation for TR here and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this CL term by a term involving weight. So remember that CL can be written as L by Q infinity S, where again Q infinity is dynamic pressure, that is half rho infinity V infinity square. S is the area of the wing, and so therefore this is W by Q infinity S. So remember that all these derivations are being made with the idea of level flight. So essentially in all these cases, lift is balanced by the weight. So with this modification, I can write TR as this equation here. That is Q infinity S C D zero plus W square by Q infinity S pi E A R. So the point about putting everything in terms of W is because we actually know W. We know the aircraft weight. So I can now easily calculate some of the parameters in this equation. So now we are going to find the minimum point for this trust. And so now we think of this as a function. So essentially, if you recall from calculus, 
if you have a function and you want to find its minimum point you differentiate it and set it to zero that gives you the stationary point and then you need to check if the stationary point is a minimum point a maximum point or a saddle point so we start with this tr value here and we are going to find the velocity at which this equation is going to be a minimum or it's going to have a minima so to do that i differentiate tr with respect to q infinity because q infinity is a direct measure of v infinity and so i get this equation here so the first term simply becomes scd0 and the second term becomes negative w square by q infinity square s pi e a r so do recall this is from calculus the derivative of q infinity is simply one and the derivative of 1 by q infinity is minus 1 by q infinity square. So once I set this equal to 0, I can very easily write the equation for which the stationary point takes place. So now to do that, I essentially write this equation out. So this equation will become cd0 is this term here. So what happened, the s came in the denominator here. So you get a w by q infinity s whole thing square. And then you get 1 by pi e a r. Now, here what I do is I immediately recall that this w by q infinity s is same as c l. And so I can write this equation as c l square by pi e a r, where I replace this w by q infinity s by c l. And therefore, I immediately realize this is nothing but c d i or the induced rag. So essentially, at the stationary point, the cd0 value should be equal to the cdi value or also if i want to think in terms of the actual force values the zero lift drag is equal to drag due to lift so many people actually just take that value at that point and many books you will find that but if we are mathematically correct we need to actually check whether this point is a minimum point or not so we take the value of tr, we differentiate it like we did in the previous slide, and we again differentiate it. So when you take the second derivative, this term simply becomes 0, and this term becomes q infinity cube here, and the minus term vanishes. Instead, you get the two term here because there is a minus and there is one more minus coming from the derivative of 1 by q infinity square. So this is what we get and by looking at this equation very carefully, we'll see that all these values are positive. So for example, W is positive because the weight of the aircraft is positive. Q infinity is half rho infinity V infinity squared. So that's positive because V infinity is being squared. Density is positive. S is positive because it's the area of the wing. E is positive value, something like 0.8 or 0.85. And aspect ratio is, of course, positive also. So this whole thing being positive, this is greater than zero. And therefore, we have proved that this is a minimum point. So if you recall a typical function like this, this is a minimum point. At this point, the slope is zero or the derivative is zero. And the second derivative is positive. That is the necessary and sufficient condition for a minimum point. So we have proved that here. So now, Let's try to make a picture out of this. So essentially, we take this equation and we have plotted it. And to plot it, we can actually plot these different components differently. So let's first consider the parasite drag component. That is Q infinity SCD0. And the plot of this goes something like this if I'm plotting with respect to velocity. So do remember that Q infinity is half rho infinity V infinity square. So a linear variation with Q infinity would mean a quadratic variation with v infinity similarly here we have 1 by q infinity term so again this goes like this here so this is like a 1 by v infinity squared term so the induced drag term is in blue it's going like this the parasite drag term is in term is in red it's going like this and so the total of these two drags which are actually countered by the trust which is the trust required goes like this here now the minimum point of this function of trust required is going to be here and this point does correspond to the re point where induced drag is equal to parasite drag which is given by this particular equation which we obtained in the slide before now of course you immediately realize that this is the velocity at which you should fly 
for the L by D max to occur and for thrust required to be minimum value. So let's give some comments on this particular derivation we did and what it tells you. So we see that thrust required is actually an airplane phenomena. That means all the aspects of this equation tell you that it depends on the airplane and on certain parameters such as the air density and the air speed because Q infinity would of course involve density and air speed. Now this equation also tells you that thrust required depends on the area of the wing that is S, the parasite drag that is this term here, the aircraft weight that is W, wing aspect ratio that is AR that means you could control it by the slenderness level of the wing and so on, the Oswald span efficiency factor which is the value of E and of course the density and air speed. Now one of the problems of course is going to be that there is a limitation on the thrust that is available to you as far as flight is concerned. So the thrust which is available to you depends on the type of engine. For example, if we consider a typical TR by V infinity curve, this is the thrust required shown in green, then the thrust available is something like this. And of course, if you go beyond this point of Vmax, you will see that the required thrust is more than the available thrust. So of course, you cannot fly in this region. So the maximum velocity you can fly with is given by this Vmax. And this is when thrust available is greater than thrust required. So how does this particular thrust available curve vary. Now this curve is different depending on the different type of engines you are considering. So for example, if we are considering a typical jet engine situation here, we get this red line here. So it is more or less constant, but slightly increases as the velocity goes up. So in a typical jet aircraft, such as you see here, for example, it could be the Boeing 737, the Airbus A320 or any such aircraft then you are typically going to get a thrust available which is somewhat constant and actually has a better value at higher speed. So jets are always preferred in high speed situations. Now, jet engines are rated in terms of thrust, which means that it's typically something like Newton, kilonewton and so on. And TA and TR are useful for jet engine powered aircraft performance. So whenever you are dealing with jet, you want to deal with the thrust. However, when you are looking at a propeller, the value of TA falls like this. So it's actually falling quite substantially and dramatically with respect to V infinity here, especially if you are approaching the M infinity in one region, the thrust tends to fall very much in this region. So most of the propeller aircraft you will see fly at relatively low speed where the thrust available for the reciprocating engine propeller combination is actually better and you will see most of the aircraft are these small type of aircraft like the one I have shown here. So why does this happen? You will see that propeller blade tips actually encounter compressibility effect at relatively high speed. So you may be much below Mach number one, but your propeller blade tips are encountering compressibility. This is something which happens in helicopters also, by the way, that helicopter rotor blade tips are getting Mach numbers which are pretty high, even though the helicopter itself is flying at a relatively low speed. And also because of this phenomena, the thrust abates at high Mach numbers. And actually this can be a significant problem for the, uh, the propeller type of uh, systems. Now propellers are rated in terms of power, which means that you have to specify the power in watts, often in kilowatts, sometime in horsepower, and power available and required is useful for propeller powered aircraft performance. So to summarize, I would say that thrust required is a minimum when CL by CD is a maximum. Aircraft must fly at angles where CL by CD is maximum. Also, we saw that for minimum thrust, zero lift drag equals to drag due to lift. So CD zero equals CDI. And the equation for thrust required is given by this equation where the red part is the parasite drag 
and the blue part is the induced drag component. So these components of drag need to be balanced by the trust. Sometimes people call it the trust required for parasite drag and the trust required for induced drag also or the induced trust and the parasite trust. So one of the important things to remember from this lecture is that jet engines are rated in terms of trust, which is newtons, and propeller engines are rated in terms of power, which is watt, sometimes horsepower also. And so these are things which are important in their performance. In the next lecture, I'm going to look at the power required and the available power, and these are going to be specifically important for propeller aircraft. So, we see that jet aircraft have become quite ubiquitous as far as most flights between cities are concerned. There are still many situations where propeller aircraft are flying, especially if you are flying at very small distances between two cities. Propeller aircraft can come in very handy and they are often priced at a lower priced point than jet aircraft. So there are certain situations where propellers are advantage. We also see many of the aircraft which are used by trainers and for training pilots are also in the propeller regime. So very often when you learn flying, you may learn it at first in the propeller aircraft and then you have achieved some level of complexity, you move to the jet aircraft. So if you are somebody who has been learning flying and you have anything to share, please leave it in the comment section on these videos. So. I'll end this lecture now and I will see you in a video sometime soon. See you then.